Thanks, Marlene, for doing this. Great fun to do it. <laughs> so you are, it seems to me, almost the history of commercial theatre in Toronto. I mean, since the 19, mid-60s, say. So to all those students out there who are going to be watching who think they want to be a producer of theatre, what do you say to them? Think twice, <laughs> but then just go for it. I've had a lot of fun doing it. I really have. Uh, I've had a lot of not so fun times too. But um, and I st I got into it quite by accident. I mean, um, I actually this part is the good part. I got married and had four children under six. That's a so, producing act. <laughs> so I thought, hmm. Uh, as I got a little older, I thought I've got to get out and talk to an adult. Um, so I actually, I forget the year, I answered an ad in the paper for hair to work in the office. And I thought, oh, I can do that a couple of days a week. Now, was that just to get out of the house, or was yeah. that because you actually like theater? To get out of the house, oh, okay. to something different, and talk to an adult. Um, and you think working in the theater is talking to adults? <laughs> well, not always, it turned out, <laughs> I can tell you. Um, but anyway, it turned out to be, uh, and there is a lot of who you know in this business, but John Bassett was uh, producing hair, and he said, no, you don't want the job in the office. I think you should do group sales. And nobody had ever done group sales before. I said, okay. He said, you work all week. I said, I can't work all week. I can't leave the house every day. They actually put their phone system, their box office, in my house. So I did all that group sales business from the house. And we are talking late 1960s and the Royal yeah. Alex and yeah. the Mervish production of hair is what we're talking about. Yes, with John Bassett. It, it was certainly an, a nigh opener to show business, hair was. It was when drugs were in bloom, so to speak. And some nights there were nine people on stage because you lose your voice if you smoke pot. I mean, you can smoke it if you want, but don't expect to sing a show every night. So a lot of people were missing from the show, but it was such a huge experience for everybody. It was fabulous. And they all had fun doing it. But it, w it was a tough show to manage. But that was a Bassett production or a Mervish production? Well, they did it with the Mervishes. Yeah. And, and was that the first sort of mega musical uh, original production here? Not original, but a Canadian production of a musical from Yes. Somewhere. It was yes. the first one, so yes. to speak. Definitely. And what do you think uh, uh, inspired Bassett and Mervish to actually take the chance and do it? I think Bassett had a lot to do with it. They had a very terrific guy managing it, Jerry Livengood, who knew what he was doing. See, none of that stuff was ever, you're right, up here. We didn't know. I know when it came to, um, I guess right after that is when I did Godspell, and I couldn't have done Godspell without the help of the U.S because there were people there who knew how to teach. We don't do any of that here. It's, a lot of it is hands-on experience. You know, you can't sit in a classroom forever and learn what goes on. Um, it was, and I thought they were crazy. The first one I did after Hare was one they phoned and said, uh, who turned out to be my mentor, was Marvin Krauss. And he said, I've got a show here that should go up to Canada called What's a Nice Country Like You Doing in a State Like This. I'm telling you, it was so funny and lots of fun. And they just took the time to teach you and, and know how to put a show together. Teach you what? Marketing? Everything. Ticket sales, potential audience, touring audience. I mean, why would you do this? And, and can you do it financially viable? Um, when the auditions for Godspell, and you know it's become the infamous company of Godspell with Andrea Martin, Marty Short, Victor Garber, Paul Schaefer, Eugene Levy, Dave Thomas, I mean they were coming out our ears, Gilda Radner. Um, 
And I spent 14 months with them as company manager, and they sent an American up to work with me for 10 days, took me on a marketing thing. What did, I mean, it was quite amazing. And what did, the, what did the American coming up teach you? How to go about, what to use, what, when, and, and it's a lot of the thinking. I think producing does take a lot of common sense. And I think sometimes people think, oh, I'll just put on a show. Well, it doesn't work that way. There's so much stuff that goes before it. Common sense in sort of, give me a specific, Just as it were. general things. Why, why would you hire one person than, rather than another? Well, maybe because that other one is going to sell more tickets, which is a real problem in Canada because we don't really have that standard here. I mean, you know, you can go down to the States and hire Lily Tomlin, for instance. We don't always have that Lily Tomlin to do, or Robert Redford, or whoever it is. You can't get, the Canadians are so quiet, and they're like, I classify them as sheep, you know, just follow the leader. and. And You're talking about the producing side or the <laughs> performing side, you know, we don't have the Lily Tomlins, and, but we... We do have the Shauna McKennas, but somehow the Shauna That's McKennas right. and the Fiona Reeves don't become the Lily Tomlins. So why does that not happen? I think that the Canadian audiences haven't learned that we have a phenomenal group of actors here. And I've done, I guess, over 61 shows. I've only hired two Americans. I won't do it. 